Okay guys, um, welcome to the next part of our N20 engine teardown and rebuild for the F30 here in the background. So I'm just gonna give you a quick walk through what we're going to do in the process to tear this thing down to remove the engine. There's a lot of things that have to come off the car. Um, we're gonna drain all the fluids, we're gonna remove all the engine bay accessories, all the trims under the car and start to prepare to get the actual drivetrain ready to lower out of the car. So I'll walk you through what's underneath the car here. I'll just get my light. So under the car, we have a whole range of trims, uh, which you know obviously help with aerodynamics and protect debris from running up off the road, hitting things under the car. Um, we've got the exhaust system, which runs down through a single system, some brackets and heat shields that'll come off. We have to access tail shaft and things like that and expose all the, the drivetrain components so we can undo all the fasteners and bolts and get that lowered down. We'll take this thing out on the whole subframe onto one of our engine tables and detach all the suspension components and leave all that behind in the chassis for now. Once we remove the engine, we'll be able to put the subframe back in and roll the car off the hoist. So let's bring it down and um, we'll go through the top side and explain briefly what we're gonna pull out and then we'll get started. Okay, so just looking again at the top side, you would have seen from the previous video, these sorts of shots, but pretty simple thing to remove from this chassis compared to other engines, especially the V8s and V10s. I can get a little bit cramped. So we'll start off by just taking off all these trims and pipes. We'll drain all the coolant out and remove our engine fan. Take all our top trims off and scuttle panels. Uh, we'll access all the wiring harness and detach all that from the body so that we can bundle it all on top and that'll all just come out with the engine. So what we're going to do is we're going to put an engine table underneath which we'll lower the car down onto and then the motor and box will sit on that and we'll raise the car up off everything. So let's get our hands dirty and start removing some trims. First piece. Enclosure there. Very well made and painted. So we've removed a few of the initial trims there and exposed some coolant hoses and the fan and things that need to come out. But before we do that, I'm just gonna take it up and drain the engine oil and some coolant so we can try and minimize the mess when we undo things up the top here. Alrighty, so that's our trays off and exposed a few more components here which all need to come undone next. We'll take this brace off and start draining engine oil and get some of this coolant out. The RSF intercooler. 
pretty thick and heavy, but yeah, it's better than stock. But yeah, I think we could um, probably revise that at some point in the future. So here we'll remove the tie rod end, the control arm and caster arm off the subframe. That'll allow us to drop the whole assembly down on the table. That's the control arms off, sway bar end link next, and then we can start looking to lower the whole assembly down onto the table, I guess. No, that's one whole side freed up. Do the same on the other side and see where we are. Now we can access the tail shafts. Weevo bolts nice and easy. We'll pop that out and do the center bearing and in the rear. We're just about ready to put this whole thing on the table and bring it out. We'll disconnect the battery now. Obviously we want to disconnect power so we don't cause any shortages or any modules to go flat while everything's disconnected. Leaving a battery connected and taking an engine out in the car sitting can cause damage to modules so we try to avoid that. We just take the earth terminal off which is obviously the safest way to do it. And we just put a rag over the, the lock here so that when we close the boot we don't get ourselves in trouble there. Just put some of these trims away while we're at it. All the clean stuff that we don't want to get damaged. So take the cooling cap off so we've got some air that can go in. We'll drain that shortly. So this is our air conditioning evacuation machine. This is just taking all the gas out of the system so we can disconnect the lines, which will come off the AC condenser down there, as you can see. We've got our engine harness mostly disconnected from the body to the engine. It's gonna be a couple of um, heater core lines at the back of the firewall possibly and I think that's just about everything in the bay. So we've got to pull the box off this thing, get it off the subframe, get the subframe back into the car so we can make it rollable again. And then we'll put the engine onto a stand and start tearing it down. So the first thing we're gonna do here is pull the torque converter bolts off, which is our inspection hole. You can just see a bolt up there, There's six of them. We'll rotate the engine and get those out. 
Then we've got to lift the engine up and get to some of the bottom bell housing bolts. Take all these ones off around here. Take the cooler line off. And I think there should be a, well that's already off, the plug's been removed from the box there, electrical plug. And yeah, we'll take the dump pipe off, which obviously is aftermarket. That'll go back on. That'll go back onto the new turbo actually, which is all sitting here still from, you might remember the other week we showed all these parts. They're all still here. Okay, well, um, let's crack on and get this thing onto a stand so we can tear it down today and get the block off to the engine shop to get sleeved and dowelled. You gotta feed the supervisor. Hmm? What do you reckon? So, what you got there? Is that your lunch? Glad you came prepared. Okay, so there's our engine on the stand. Um, we'll start stripping off all the ancillaries, AC, alternator, starter motor. We'll take off the wiring harness, computer, inlet manifold. Then we'll start on the top end here, which we've got all our high pressure common rail direct injection fuel system. Take all the lines off, coils out. We'll take the fuel injectors out. Then we'll, um, We'll get into the exciting stuff. We'll strip this thing down, get the timing gear off, get the head off, take the bottom rotating assembly out and um, give it a quick rinse and we'll, we'll run out to Jenkins Performance Engines and get them to have a look at the sleeving and doweling on this thing. Hopefully um, everything goes well and that'll get us to the next stage of the build. So we're midway pulling this engine apart. As you can see, all the bolt-ons have been taken off, the wiring harness and rocker cover. We've taken the injectors out and the, the buckets that go around those. And now we're just starting to sort out the valve train, taking the eccentric shaft stoppers out, which this valve tronic motor here operates. This is the valve tronic motor here, which we're about to take out. It drives this cam here, which turns the eccentric shaft. And it has these legs here that operate the valve lift. Essentially, this thing is your new throttle body. This is what moves to control idle um, by opening the valves rather than the throttle body opening up. Most BMWs use this technology now. It's just called valve tronic. Anyway, we'll get it all apart and get ready to pull the head off. So 
so we've just taken the oil pump drive gear bolt off this one that is a normal thread for anyone who's looking to try that for the first time sometimes they're reverse thread and that catches a lot of people and she goes break all right we'll get the pump off and pull the slugs out and wash the block down and get it ready for transport Bearings are not too bad, eh? The whole engine's been really, really healthy actually during the teardown. Everything's been what you'd expect for the kilometres, if not better. Certainly we've had another 100,000 Ks left in it, looked after. All right, so all the slugs are out. We'll pull the bottom brace off, which is one big main cap holds the crank in place and that'll split the block through there that line and we're just about done take the timing chain guide out a couple of sensors around the block so they don't get lost during the machine work and um, off to get some modifications done bearings look really good. Okay guys, well that wraps up this week with the N20 removal and teardown. I've just come back from Jenkins Performance Engines, if you can see that there, and met James. He's um, He's got the block there and the pistons and he's going to start getting the sleeves organized for this thing and then I'll go and pick it up off him hopefully uh, mid next week and we can get it doweled and then the machining finished off and we'll continue on with the assembly. So thanks for watching guys and we'll get part three out to you when the engine goes back together. Cheers.